Hey everyone, I'm back again on the Athlon PC. Uh, where we left things off, I had kind of built this machine up from a pile of parts that I had kicking around over the years, and um, yeah, completed the machine. And um, yeah, of course, uh, me being the tinkerer I am, uh, it got the better of me, and I wanted to try out some uh, CPUs. And um, long story short is I ended up breaking the computer, which we'll get into soon. So you can see here the machine is posting and I've been playing around with some uh, other CPUs and things to see uh, what I can get out of the machine. If you guys have worked with the um, Socket A platform before you'll be aware of the CPU cooler design. Uh, and long story short, my screwdriver slipped off the heatsink of the CPU and I knocked off either a resistor or a small capacitor. Uh, either one of these components and uh, damaging the motherboard so it no longer posts and it no longer registers memory I don't have the tools to currently fix this motherboard so I'm going to put it to one side and I found this motherboard at the local recycling center where I seem to get uh, most of my computer parts these days it's got a few issues um, that brown stuff you're seeing there on the board or yellowy stuff uh, that's not really dust that is capacitor backside explosion uh, juices um, so well, I'm, I'm a bit of dust there mixed in but yeah the capacitors on this board are blown apart I got the board for like I think it was like two dollars or something like that um, and given I don't have a microscope and I don't have um, the exact replacement part for the other board um, I figured why not just recap the motherboard that we've got here with some um, new capacitors This uh, replacement motherboard does come with its own set of issues, so we'll get into that soon, but um, I figured that it would be a lot easier just to quickly recap this board with some of the parts that have failed uh, than it would be to try and fix the other one up, mainly because of the placement of the component. It's really small, it's right next to the memory modules. I don't have the skills or expertise to get in there, as I said, or the correct part. Um, so I haven't thrown that board out, I've still got it, but um, one day I might be able to fix it. But um, yeah, I saved this one at least from the scrap heap, so you know, I guess it's um, always good being able to do that. But yeah, we're just going to do a simple recap process, and um, fingers crossed the motherboard hopefully works.
Alright, with the recap procedure completed, I really should have done all capacitors at this point. I don't know if this motherboard's going to work. I carefully secured the heatsink back down to the processor socket. Um, you'll see there is an issue with that, um, which I'll show coming up. But uh, we're going to do a quick post test and make sure that my repair actually stuck and the machine actually posts. So, yeah, firing it up here. As you can see, we've got a post message, we've got a CPU, um, we're further ahead than what I was before, one step forward, two back, or something like that. And this is where the extra jank is going to come into play. So, uh, one of the reasons this board was also thrown out is because one of the retaining bits of plastic on the CPU socket is actually broken. Someone um, just wrenched the heatsink off this motherboard at some stage. Um, likely because it doesn't work and the capacitors had exploded. Um, I do not have a three clip retaining socket A heatsink. I checked everywhere. I've had a good look online around uh, New Zealand and I can't find one. And the only place I can seem to get one is eBay. And the shipping plus the cost of the heatsink is something like 60 or 70 dollars in New Zealand just for a heatsink. Um, Given I got the CPU and the motherboard from the same recycling center for peanuts, I am going to risk it with the zip ties until I can find a suitable uh, replacement heatsink. So yes, I'm fully aware this is a crap solution, um, but look, it's not going anywhere, and I really just don't want the heatsink coming off its little clip there, which you can see. So we're going to carry on and put the machine back together um, now that we know that the motherboard works and the heatsink is somewhat secured, even though it's secured badly. Um, but yeah, we'll just put the motherboard back in the train, this nice sliding train, and um, yeah, re reassemble the machine. Our uh, classic old friend, the motherboard standoff situation, um, yeah, bit me again. And uh, yes, when I was at the recycling center, I did try to locate the I.O. shield for the motherboard, but I couldn't find any. Um, yeah, going back to the retaining clips and stuff for the board, the standoffs, of course, are not in the correct position. Um, but thankfully, I had ordered some motherboard standoff clips from the good old AliExpress. I tell you, when you've got these sort of things just sitting around on hand in your stock, it makes life a lot easier. I really would have struggled without that. Uh, so this way at least I can bolt the motherboard in or screw it in and the standoffs keep it off um, the back parts where there are no metal um, bosses for the standoffs to screw into. This um, I.O. tray thing that the motherboard sits in uh, has got these really odd looking squares. You can see them around there on the left side. Um, so yeah, I had to use the plastic ones, but once I um, got that annoying thumb screw, because that's the only one that seems to fit in that top or bottom right hand corner, um, yeah, just a matter of screwing everything back in. Overall, the reassembly process was um, pretty uneventful, so that was good. Um, but yeah, we're just going to put the motherboard tray back in on that nice sliding uh, mechanism and deal with all the front here stuff, which um, ended up being a little bit more tricky. I had to de-pin um, the power uh, LED it was, actually. It was a three-pin um, LED thing, and um, I had to move one of the ground pins, or is it the positive anode pin? I can't remember. Um, but I had to just move that around, so that took a bit of uh, fiddling around with, but got there eventually. Uh, yeah, I really wished I had the I.O. shield. As I said, I tried looking for it in the bin um, where this motherboard was sitting, but yeah, they must go into a separate bucket or somewhere that I don't have access to. It's actually amazing that they let me even go and get these bits, so 
Yeah, here we are struggling with the classic front header stuff that took a good half hour, <laughs> not quite, and uh, ribbon cables as well. So this is a gigabyte case, I've got some nice gigabyte ribbon cables still in there, and we've got a gigabyte motherboard, which I thought was pretty swanky. Um, but yeah, I've got a few other little upgrades and things that we're going to put in this machine. While we're here, you know, might as well, with the cases apart. This is a Windows 2000 machine after all, so it can take some uh, more fancy modern parts that you'd otherwise wouldn't be able to really work with uh, under Windows 98. So more memory, newer video cards, more storage, stuff like that. But yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to put some of the cards back in, starting of course with the network fast Ethernet 2 100. Uh, yeah, blazing fast, classic Sound Blaster Live. It's a good enough card for Windows 2000 and Windows 98, of course. So, yeah, no real good DOS support, but I'm um, not really using it here. So, Sound Blaster Live, it is. Plus, these things are dirt cheap and they're everywhere. Honestly, they do make pretty decent. Uh, cards for this purpose. Sticking with the Gigabyte theme, I've got this uh, 7600 GS NVIDIA uh, AGP card that I've had just sitting around for years as well. It's definitely not a fast card. Um, I have a feeling the AGP bus on this motherboard is actually limiting the performance severely. Um, and oddly enough, it has a Molex uh, connector for extra power. Um, so yeah, we've got to deal with that, but yeah, I thought it was kind of neat that it was a Gigabyte um, AGP card, matching with the case, the motherboard, um, and the ribbon cables, yeah, going all sort of Gigabyte out in the early 2000s here with this one, but yeah, I managed to drag down a Molex uh, connector from the power supply, which I think was the Antec power supply we had left in here from last time, most of the parts and this machine is still from the previous build. Fresh CMOS battery of course going in, I think it's got a close to about 3 volts so it's good enough. I'm um, going to heave the case around, it's quite a big case as well, it's quite heavy and unwieldy to move around but you know it's really cool having a full tower case and um, yeah full assembly back together, we'll power it up. The upgrades aren't quite done yet, we'll go into that soon, but yeah, I just really want to make sure that everything checks out and the machine actually works. Thumbs up for Gold Star Repair. Yeah, as you guys can hear, the CD uh, DVD ROM drive is really noisy, so we're going to do something about that. In the meantime, I'm going to pick off the low hanging fruit, which of course is just putting more memory in. I can't remember what I initially spec'd this machine with, but we're going with 512 uh, megabytes of DDR RAM. I think this machine only supports like. Uh, 333 megahertz or something thereabouts um, yeah so it's not the fastest but hey you know I've got stuff kicking around and from that recycling center I ended up picking up a really interesting DVD ROM drive uh, which you'll get to see shortly so I'm going to remove this generic Acer one which is really noisy and rattly and loud and you could hear it back there in the in the video but um, yeah we've got a Rico DVD ROM drive which I've um, fitting the rails to here. I uh, genuinely had no idea that Rico or Rico, I'm pretty sure it's Rico, um, made optical drives. I thought they were just like an imaging company, maybe medical. Uh, I know they make image sensors, they've got cameras, printers, uh, things like that. And um, as I said, possibly in the medical industry, most of these big brands have some sort of uh, medical industry input. But um, yeah. From the same recycling center I just saw this little guy uh, just sitting around in the pile. I tested it out a few months ago. I don't know why I'm making that face while installing the drive, uh, but yeah, it works a treat. So, you know what? And it's pretty cool. I like the flap that comes down like that. That's pretty neat. I just, I don't know why I'm amused by the, the flap that pops down when you open them up. And of course with storage, I'm not stopping there, I'm going with a Samsung hard drive, mainly because the original drive, which you can hear in the background, is really noisy. Uh, so yeah, we're going to put the old mouse mat down um, for some protection, um, so nothing shorts out. Uh, it's good enough just to get the drive cloned, so yeah, pretty 
pretty snazzy mouse mat there. And I'm going to use an old favorite of mine, the good old Norton Ghost. I've got a legit CD-ROM just kicking around here. It's bootable and it's easy to use and uh, works a treat for this sort of job. Overall, the disc clone didn't take too long, about 13, 12 minutes or so. So we've gone from a Western digital drive to a Samsung. And uh, shortly you will hear the noise of the old or existing drive. It's pretty noisy, so listen to this. Yeah, it's um, that's not really amplified, it's just... Um, quite loud and when your head is sitting next to the computer it's it's really noisy so I'm gonna just keep that drive for something else of course you have to remove the whole uh, tray assembly to get the new drive in but um, yeah once that's installed it's not too bad you've got to slide it in um, yeah pretty typical stuff of cases of this generation once again making faces at the computer trying to get things in Right now the officer doofus there has finished doing that, uh, we've got a successful Windows 2000 uh, boot here which is always good to see, uh, it's always good doing a bit of a disk defrag as well after doing something like this um, and yeah getting the front cover snapped back into place, always a bit nerve wracking given the age of these machines and the plastics and things like that but um, yeah everything seemed to work out and we got the machine back together I will be honest, this thing has been sitting apart for a few months now, so it's good to have it back together. Um, and I had to sadly remove the Gigabyte badge from that graphics card to fit a small uh, fan, because I noticed that that car gets really hot, it's passively cold, and yeah, I, I didn't like how hot it was getting, so in order to fit a fan onto the heatsink, I had to remove the little badge. So I thought why not add more gigabyte badges to the case and also it's there if I ever need to stick it back onto the heatsink. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's all back together and uh, working to train. So you can see here I'm playing some San Andreas, so I'm back where I was started uh, before I destroyed the machine, but overall a successful repair. Once again, I will try and track down a better heatsink for the processor. I tried removing the socket from the old motherboard as well, but with 420 something pins on that, it uh, wasn't very feasible. Uh, so if I do ever track down a proper CPU heatsink, that will be fitted in replacement of the zip tie solution that I've got here. So yeah, what I'll do is I'll call it temporary permanent until I find something better. So anyway, for now, machine saved, it's working, back up and running, and um, yeah, saved from the dumpster uh, for more parts, so cool. All right, guys, I'll leave you to it, and we'll catch you guys soon in the next one. Bye for now.